fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah, Game of Thrones, yeah, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah, Game of Thrones, yeah, it's the Game of Fucking Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones. Hello, welcome to Super Geeks Game of Thrones reaction show, which is usually titled Throne of Geeks. We have a special guest with us today who's trying to stay awake. His name is Lord Michael of House Hinman. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm great. How about you guys? I'm good. His house motto is, we shall not snore. We shall not snore. <laughs> no, I do that way too much. I'm not really used to this whole video thing. So, I'm you know, right. I've my mom, my mom always told me that I had a face for radio. So, um, and that was the nicest thing she ever said to me. Yeah, my, you kind of remind me of Howard Stern. My, 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 my dad told me I have a face like the, uh, the mailman. So, I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I'm Lord Commander George of the Geeks Watch, and with me, as always, except you can see him this time, is Raul the Whisperer. How are you doing, Raul? I I'm actually Raul Baelish now. Remember. Oh, God. <laughs> this is his little finger, except it's bigger. Anyways, um, all right. Well, other people will be joining us in the middle of the show, apparently, so we've been informed by Raven. Um, and tonight we're reacting to Season 8, Episode four, which I still don't know the goddamn title of this thing. Anybody and neither does the internet. I mean, amazing. I keep refreshing. Michael, do you, did you hear what the title is for this? Um, I think it's called the the long next morning. It was pretty long. It was maybe. It was pretty pretty long. It took us until the beginning of the last show to even figure out like uh, refresh, refresh, refresh. HBO says, "Oh, that's the title." This time, I'm like sitting there going, uh, 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 and nothing. Yeah, it's it looks like HBO is referring to it as episode four. Or maybe that's the name. Something I don't know. Wow, they, they've gotten something. all uh, they've gotten all Babylon Babylon Five. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, by the time we uh, air this episode, hopefully <laughs> everybody will know the title. Otherwise, it's just the next morning. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I actually refer to this episode as the worst kept secret. That's my private title for this episode because. It's like when you tell your sisters or someone, uh, and, and, and then don't tell anybody. That's the theme of this episode. We're gonna. Yeah, but when you're also sleeping with that same sister, that's when it all. Goes no, 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 no. Different. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> so I want to start with Michael. Um, I, I, I want to uh, get your first impressions. What sticks out to you the most? Of, uh, as far I, I, I'll talk about certain scenes, but coming out of this episode, like what stuck out in your mind as far as something you go, hmm. I remember this. Well, I mean, I think that you're going to see fans, you know, complaining about this because it's a setup episode. I mean, we're setting up for yeah. the last two episodes, you know, which obviously is going to be, you know, a, a major finale. And by the way, my HBO just refreshed into Spanish. So I don't know if that's going to help us either. So uh, wow. I'm not sure why I did that, but now Love it's in Spanish. <laughs> so I was trying to see if I could get the episode name, but it's Maybe not. Translate. What are you seeing? Uh, it's not saying it doesn't have an episode name. It says Las Familias Mas Poderosas. Oh I don't know, I get it in Spanish. But uh, yeah. Uh, so At least I, I don't say the word taco, which would have been extremely <laughs> <rare>. <laughs> the, well, No, but I mean, the, the problem, the, the, the thing that people can be complaining about is like, oh, it was slow moving. And it was slow moving. It's a setup episode. It's yeah, a, yep. I mean, we, we just had a major battle, the Battle of Winterfell, which was probably one of the most fantastic it, yeah, yeah. battle scenes ever done for television and maybe even for movies. I mean, and what the it's been like. The that rivals it was the Battle of the Bastards, and it's the same group. Yeah, yeah, and the Battle of the Bastards is what helped Game of Thrones win their second uh, overall Emmy yes. uh, last year. So, um, if if that's if that's in play again, I mean, they th I think they topped that. I think that, I mean, it's pretty much already certain who's going to win, you know, Emmy anyway for this. But you know, it's their last season, of course they will. But uh, you know, it's so a lot of people, you know, but this is the kind of stuff that made Game of Thrones great, which was seeing the characters interact, which was yes. you know seeing Sansa walk around. You know, I I love the fact that that I kind of that, that the whole episode especially with her with Sansa's discussion with the hound where they were sitting across from each I other love that. And, and the whole idea about you know where he was reminding us how much Sansa has changed because I think it's really easy to forget that sometimes and you know and she's such a different character she is a totally different character and I love the fact that the hound said like hey bitch if you had come with me 
you know, none of this other crap that you went through would have happened. I had and she's like, that he helped and she's, too. Always and she's like, no, she's like, if, the, if that shit didn't happen, then I would have been not the person at all that I am now. Bird. Yeah. The little bird, yeah. I totally that was forgot. fantastic. Yeah, I totally forgot that the hound. I would, I would like to point out one thing in support of Mike's uh, uh, statement. Uh, this episode, while maybe not the most action packed, maybe it didn't have the 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 drama and the action of <laughs> of, 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 a, of a of a death scene, more or less. Uh, however, what it did have was incredible acting, character acting on the part of almost every single actor in that ensemble. Yeah. It was amazing. It was one yeah. better, one of the best acted episodes of the entire series, in my opinion. By the way, we do have the name of the episode now. Oh, what is it? It is called. Is, can you see it? Episode four. No, I'm just kidding. It's just. They I think just Star Wars. It and it doesn't. It just still doesn't tell me. They uh, think they're Star Wars now, so now it's just episode yeah, four. Yeah. Oh. A New Hope. Oh yeah. Oh, that must be it then. It's a, a new, new Hope. Uh, it's a uh, spring. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they're not giving us the name of the episode. That's really odd. It is weird. odd. I, I found so it. Sometimes they think that the episode titles are going to give a spoiler, so they're really careful with that. I don't know. Maybe they will. Yeah, but we've already seen it. At this point, yeah. So it's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I, I mean, because last week, again, I was I joked about this. I said I had to keep refreshing. It. And then finally, Carla, I, I, we were starting the episode. And this was two hours later. And Sean is like, uh, oh. And then they figured out what the title was. I'm still not seeing it when I refresh. I'm still not. It's kind of weird. Um, you know what, though? I'll just call it episode four, whatever, until we get a title. Um, but, yeah, so. Well, okay, so Wikipedia is saying it's called The Last of the Starks. I don't know if that's accurate because they don't have a reference to it, but it Wikipedia good. is referring to it as The Last of the Starks. How which could videos? I don't know. I mean, but no, but I mean, but that could work. I mean, because they, you know, you are talking about the Starks all getting together, and they're really not all the Starks. Oh, one that's of them is the Targaryen. True. You know what's well, funny? And though? they buried, and they just buried Theon. So, well, it's not just that, and he and she put the pin on him, so that kind of works because she said you're yes. an honorary Stark because that was the, the last point. of the Starks. No, but they uh, do say the line. You know, but they do say that when they meet in the in the Godswood or wherever the hell they were. Yeah. I can't remember. I want to say it was the Godswood, but I might be misremembering that. They, uh, you know, they even said like we're the last of the Starks. This is it. Uh, yeah, you know, and that's where John's like, uh, hmm, wait, something I gotta tell you. But something he is still like, a Stark either way. He's a Stark and a Targaryen. That's the weird thing. You know what yes. I mean? Like he's both. He's like Lyanna Stark's son, and he's the son of Rhaegar Targaryen. So it's like he's the literal he's the literal metaphor or epiphany of the two co houses combining. So he is still Stark. He's just their cousin now instead of their brother. So whatever, you know. But more or less, he is the brother. You know what I mean? But in Game yeah. of Thrones, do you think it can be your cousin, brother? You know, it's just like West Virginia. And, and you oh know. my god! And by the way, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But how awesome? Because because um, because what you just said. How awesome was it that they actually said it? Danny and John talked about it. They they almost had sex, but they were like, the, John John being Mister Honorable stopped it because Mister Superman Kal-El Honorable guy said, "I can't do this, Danny. I'm your I'm your nephew." He didn't say it, but you know that's what he was thinking. You know what I'm saying? No, you know who said he's your nephew was the other person. Um... Right, but John, he's the one that actually kind of like oh, i can't do this you know what i really like though too is like when you when you had uh baldy and um and Tyrion, i can never remember baldy's name it's such a some, just weird name but you know baldy and and Spider. you know and uh you know when when you had them on the ship and it was so funny because like all all uh Tyrion had to say was isn't it amazing that all of this shit happened all because of one man falling in love with a woman who didn't love him back. And that's all Baldy needed to know to know that he knew the secret. You know, I mean, I love that. They didn't have to say anything else. He didn't have to say, hey, guess what? What I know. All he had to do was say that one line. And Baldy's like, oh, how long have you known? Who else knows? You know, <laughs> it's why, not really much of a secret anymore. Title, that's why my unofficial title for this episode, it, it's funny because John's the most honorable dude. And he tells Danny, Danny says, promise you, you won't tell anybody. She was right too, by the way. It's funny. Oh, yeah. she's right. and, and then John couldn't help it. He's Mr. Honesty. Promise me. Promise me. Swear you won't tell anyone. And of course, you're telling two women 
no offense to women out there, but you're telling two women the greatest secret in the round, nine realms, seven realms. And no, but it's not. But it's not like Sansa gossiped it. Sansa looked. You know, I mean, obviously Sansa saw where there was an opportunity for that information to be helpful. But she's and still that's really that out. she promised. That's really a little finger thing. I mean, I think that's something she picked up from Some Littlefinger. Something she learned from Littlefinger was not to listen to John's the one that goes. You, you remember the spiel he gave last season about words mean nothing if they if you don't honor them and then the second he tells his sister and says make a promise she says by the way Tyrion, you know what i mean it, that's like no but information but information is power and that's one of the things that they've always said in, in game of thrones is that yep. that information is power and those who possess that information why do you think baldy is so obsessed with having all this information because you know, because of the fact that, that there's power in, in having that information and in terms to where now you get to see, Baldy's never been a king. He's served under a bunch of kings and queens, but he's never been one himself. But here's the thing, that he is he is so powerful because, look, he and, 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 and Tyrion were sitting in the fake throne room, you know, and, you know, for the Targaryen throne room, and they were discussing making a decision on whether... Daenerys was going to remain queen or, or not. Live or die. That's the kind of power you die. get with information. The true power, like if, if that conversation was key to this entire series, not just. But that's where, but that's where Sansa. But that's what Sansa's not gossiping. Sansa, yes, Sansa is being somewhat dishonorable. But at the same time, she's also playing the Game of Thrones. You know, we yeah. we, we jump back to this whole idea that you know from the first season of of, of Cersei, where she said it to Ned Stark. It's that you know when you you know play the game of thrones you either live or you die and you know and sansa knows that it's, it's down to life and death yep. and this is her playing that she's using that by seeing her father pay the price for that for that yeah ignorance. he, he had information and he got and he got destroyed because he possessed that information he didn't know he he, he, he wasn't ready to protect himself with it or how to use that information correctly he's like i'll just go up to cersei and say hey bitch I know that these are these are your yeah, brother's yeah, kids. Yep, yeah. and and, uh, and Sansa realizes that John, and both Arya and Sansa realize that John's being literally. It's kind of funny because they, they both know that of any of the any of the kids that um, Ned Stark rubbed off on, it was John, and they both know, you know. Yeah, we got a silver yeah. word. Yeah. It, it was, was Rob, Rob too, to be honest. Rob Stark. Yeah, but well. Rob, no, Rob wasn't quite like John. He John no. literally is the paragon of. Um, right, right. No, Rob right. was trying to be. He was more of a mama's wife. He was Catelyn's kid, you know. That's uh, not a bad thing to be. Catelyn was not, a bad. But bitch. they knew that everybody always talks about He's how a boss bitch. Was, like everybody yeah. like in that pit scene last season, like how Tyrion was annoyed because everybody was annoyed because yeah, it's great, John, that you want to be Mister Honorable, but it is what got your dad, your what he thought at the time was his dad killed. And it doesn't always work, and. uh they both knew that if they kept that, like, yeah, yeah, we want to know that what you're trying to hold back. You're, trying, I got a secret. He's, he, John Snow reminds me a little bit of Edith Bunker. Archie, Archie, I can't tell you, I can't lie. And then Archie's like, oh, Edith, you dang bad, just tell me. I'm watching it earlier, and it's like uh, that's what John Snow's like. It's like everybody knows. Oh, uh, you got to go along with it and say, okay, we promise we won't do, but but if John Snow is going to do it exactly. What Jon Snow, what his father would, ex his raised father would expect. And so everybody has to go along with it because they know, okay, we know you, John. Yes, you're Mr. Honorable, and that's great. However, we've learned the hard way that you got to play the game. So the sisters are just like patting him on the head and going, okay, John, that's cute. What, so what's going on? So she te he tells them, and you got to swear to me. You got to swear to me. O okay, John, calm down. And then they tell everybody. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and, and it wasn't Arya that told anybody. It was Sansa. So it's always the gingers. Um, but like you pointed out earlier, Michael, with the Hound, I love that. The whole way that Sansa had that conversation with him. And how great was it, the, the whole party, that they took so much time for everybody just they, – they earned that victory party for everybody to have fun with each other, to have drinking games. How great was that drinking game between Brienne, Jamie? And Tyrion and uh, everybody else. But it's but it's not just about it's, but it's yeah. but the but the party isn't just about celebrating. The party is also you know it's the last 
it's the last time we're going to see everybody together like yeah, this. Yeah. This is like this is like the 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 the, the day the morning before graduation or something. Right. You know, the last time everybody's going to be together. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and this is it. I mean, this is this is the you know this is the survivor reunion show, but yeah. you know, but people are going to go back out to the game and probably get killed. So. Well, you, did you notice also that uh, it wasn't just that? It's like all the people that were in that room when Brian got knighted survived. So they had like an extra reason to like follow up on it. And some of them were annoyed with each other. Like Sir Davos was sitting there listening to Tormund brag. And he's like, we heard this already, whatever, you know. And then he's like, John's the king. And Danny's getting annoyed. Uh, and I'm like thinking, this is getting tense. And she's starting to worry about her position. And it's starting to make it look like, because everybody worried about it since the last episode. Well, she was in the middle of finding out this information. All of a sudden, the shit hit the fan. How is she going to react? And she calls him out on it. And John, this is what goes back to what Raul said, the acting. The way that um, John, who never loosens up much, he's like, he's like Superman. He really is. And he finally gets, are you drunk? No. Maybe a little bit. You know, and he's like being all, he's trying to be honorable, but everybody's forcing him to drink. But then she's trying to really put him on the spot and say, Swear to me, you won't tell anybody. This is what's going to happen. I'm worried about this. They're all looking to you because you can see it through the whole thing. She's trying to be the cool queen. She gives. Uh, okay, we got to talk about this. Lord Gendry of Storm's Edge. That was a great moment, even though we don't know if it's going to be honored based on who wins, right? But how cool was it that Gendry was given his honor, and Danny tried to play the. And she says she says to turn in front of Sansa. You're not the only one that's clever, but she says it a little too loud. And then and then she does that. And then Gendry, and I bought this totally. Uh, Gendry hasn't had a lot of experience, but he's like, Arya, I love you. Be my wife. I can't do this alone. And Arya, I knew Arya was going to be like, uh, I'm good. She's a hard bitch. She's, she's just, it made sense character-wise. What do you think of it, Michael? She's tough. She's, her mother, she's her mother's daughter. Despite mm -hmm. what, what, what everything is, she's her mother's daughter, and she's going to do what's best for, for everyone. But wasn't that realistic, though, the way Gendry was yes. reacting? And he's, like, hit, being hit with all this. He's like a blacksmith. And, and, and Danny's going to win points, of course, because she's like, I grant you what you, you know, this. And no, you know, you're, I recognize you. You're not a bastard. You know, I'm going to be cool with the people and say, blah, 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 and, and make everybody love me. And she saw that opportunity. Uh, and then he's, like, he's all hit with this, like, oh, my God. And then, of course, you know, he just had Arya in, in his bed. And he's, like... He's like, I don't know what to do. I need help. And he's like, of course he feels a little overwhelmed because we don't know if he's had any feelings for anybody else. And he's suddenly, you know, a little, he thinks he's in love because, you know, it's fresh. And Arya somehow is more mature and un understands this is a fleeting moment. Don't worry about it, you know. But she understands why he feels this way. But she's sort of being let, gently letting him down. And I just thought, I, from my own experiences as a human being, and my, I, 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 I love that moment because it, it really was realistic. But what do you guys think of that? Anybody? Well, I wonder if uh, if anybody still wonders if Arya is still Arya. So every time I every time I see Arya acting on anything, I'm always wondering if uh, if that really is Arya because I'm still convinced. Oh that it's yeah, not. yeah, yeah. It might be it might be her mentor pulling the mask back. It no. might be. I think it's blonde chick because you know. Remember, you know when her blonde chick had the, uh, you know, had that big battle right. where Arya was pretty injured. Was I mean, who? she got she got stabbed pretty bad, and then the lights went out, and we never really saw. Up if it turned out to be true. We never, we never really saw who won. I think, I think yeah, but she, that other chick knew too much, though, about the little details of their their family. No, but that's part of the magic. That's part of the magic oh, of putting on right. the face. You're right. It isn't just knowing things; it's magic. You're, you are correct. So that would that would miss. What do you think, Raul? Do you think do you think it's Arya? I mean, I think it is Arya because yeah. I think that you don't you don't give Arya all of this stuff that they're doing and all of it, it would, all of this would, family dynamics and then take that all away. It, it would ruin. It would ruin. Like, I was telling George about some of his predictions. The reason that, that I didn't believe them is because if it ruins the internal stories of, of of the characters as they go along, it's not just about live or die. It's about whether they they serve nobly in the story. And, mm -hmm. and nobly, I mean, but by, by oh. consistently and with, with an internal logic. And I think that that would be an interesting twist. However, it would deny Arya her yeah. ability to be a, a, a realistic character. It would just make her a 
uh, something like a like a, like a, like a punchline at the end of the joke. Well. Not, not like, and I think you're right, and that's why I think I've backed off from that theory. Because I mean, I was really on it for like probably a year or so that I was totally and believed that that was what was going to happen. But you're right; I think it negates everything now. I think it yeah. negates everything that she's built to this point, and I and I don't think it's worth doing. Like, it'd be a cool twist, but not not at the expense of what it would do to the story overall. I will yeah. say that I don't think we've seen the last of her mentor, the the man, uh, the the faceless man. Oh, Javier, I, whatever his name is. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't think he's going to show up him. I think he'll show up at least one more time just for something. I don't know what. Well, the resolution. The resolution. Yeah. I don't mean, he doesn't necessarily need resolution, but I think he'll show up just to say something to her about her role in the whole world or something. Um, and, cause, and, and I love the way that they walk off, her and the hound are back out there. Back on the trail. I back honestly the think trail. that's how the show is going to end is they're going to, the two of them are going to continue the unknown adventures together. We'll say that. But I just feel like that's something that I could I could totally see that because the hound is oh. damn near unkillable. How awesome was that line when Sansa when the hound asks Sansa how uh, Ramsay died, and she yes. goes hounds, and he hounds. laughed. That yeah, was, that was great. He, his acting has been so good ever since he when I first came yeah. on. I was not impressed with the hound because I love the character in the books, and I think he's twenty times more vicious in the books. However, the actor did not impress me. Lately, all I've seen is stars everywhere where I see. What do we think of uh, what do we think of what I, 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 Michael? What do you think of what happened with uh, Jamie and Brienne? Eh, I mean, I mean, you know, I know everybody. I know this is kind of a fan thing that people wanted to see those two together, and we all knew it was going to happen eventually, but. Um, you know, I, I like Brienne a lot and, you know, and I've always felt that even when, you know, even when Jamie had both hands, that Brienne was by far the, the much better fighter. And, you know, and, and I love the one scene that I love between them is when they're both fighting on that bridge, um, right. yeah. you know, way back, I think, what, third season or something. And they're fighting on the bridge. And I mean, it's a pretty good battle until those other bannermen showed up. And the moment those other bannermen showed up, you know, that were outside of this battle, she just like knocks him down and, and like pretty much pins him down like without without even looking at him, which makes you think that she was just fucking with him the whole time and she's really that good. And um, so I do like that she's such a superior fighter and, uh, you know, and I love that they knighted her and everything else because... Yeah, she beat the Hound. That's all you have to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that says it to me. The Hound is, is by far the preeminent fighter. I mean, dirty fighter. Just pure yeah. dirty fighter. And and she beat him, beat him outright. Yeah. Not through strength, not through um, of her size, because they're about the same size almost. She downs a little bigger, but uh, but but through skill, which is something I like to point out. And also, uh, you know, speaking of badasses too, by the way, you know, I think what Braun did, you know, Braun's whole, yeah, Braun's whole approach of coming in to the brothers and saying like, hey, you know, you got to give me something if you want to live it. And, you know, and of course, she was like, why would, about, we no, have a, why would we allow to uh, allow a cutthroat to come in and, uh, you know, take over house? And he's like, oh, how do you think your house is all started in the first place? You know, did, I love these the reality way, how checks. Did he, how did he even get in there past everybody with this cross cutthroat? Loaded? He's a crossroad, a cutthroat. He's, That's what he does. He's he's, he's kind of weird. He got in there. He's a rogue. He's a yeah. He's not he, again. Not a clean fighter. He's a rogue. Punched Tyrion in the nose. Didn't quite break it because he read a record. I really don't know how to, what to feel about Braun. I mean, it was it was a good uh, moment. It was all about like the money again, and it's like. The two of the, the brothers understood, but... Yeah, but it's not greed, though. I think some people have mistaken, like, you know, Bronze motives for greed. I think what happened is that bronze has been the one that has to come in and fucking... I mean, remember, he was the original champion for for Tyrion when he was yeah. up in the, in the in the hype. I can't remember what the fuck that place is called. Yeah, now. I get it. You know, but, like, but he's always the one that has to do everybody's dirty work. And, you yeah. know, and he's like, you know what? I've done enough of your dirty work. I've saved all your asses enough. You know, I deserve to get something in return. I'm not going to just be somebody from... Right up by you know, a dragon last season. Jumped. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and all he's doing, and I think that it's fair, you know, and he's wanted to leave this life, I don't know, and just be living in a castle somewhere and just relaxing, but he keeps getting called back into duty and that he deserves something for that, and I agree with him. He, did, he does. Here's a it's little that old Godfather line. I, I try to get out, and they keep pulling me back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Houses uh, are, are what keep those, pulling me back in. Yeah, and they, for those that don't know, there's a little backstory trivia. The reason why you never saw Cersei directly ask Bronn to help to do what Quigurn asked him last episode 
or two episodes ago is the actress, Lena Headey, and bronze actor were dating behind the scenes. They had a very nasty breakup. She refused to do any scenes with him. So they had to do the thing where Quiburn walked in and, and said, in the name of the queen, she asked you to take this crossbow. Because Lena Headey said, I will not film any scenes with that guy because that they had a nasty breakup off screen. Oh, wow. That's a true story. The two okay. actors like had a very bad relationship. That's something you won't see on Entertainment Tonight. Yeah, so I because at first I thought it was a little weird. We talked about this in a earlier episode, um, episode one, when we had a couple of guests, and I said that's kind of it. Kind of was weird that she didn't ask him directly that he had to like is he playing a game like he's saying the Queen, you know, she doesn't say it directly. But then I forgot, and then I saw it in an interview, and they're like, no, there's a reason why the actress refuses to shoot a scene with that guy, the guy who plays Braun, because they were dating off camera and they had a bad breakup so they have to do everything sort of third party so that's why just so if anybody that doesn't know that see stuff. i don't i mean i don't know like i i haven't heard that so i don't know but, oh, like, it was like dude, Jimmy but it's, it's not like a, it's not like a rumor it's fact it's but like, you know but but even then though i and and and, and i have to say that I, I i don't like the lack of professionalism in that because you know i, I mean agree, there's this thing like you know there's this uh you know like i mean i i because I had mono back when I was like 11 years old, I ended up, you know, watching the young and the restless and I was, and I've, and I've watched it on and off for many, many years. Cause you know, it's a soap opera. How can you get away from Days it? Of our lives for me, it's, the, it's the Godfather, you know, it gets you back in every time. But like, uh, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, that there's two actors on there who, uh, uh, were married on the show, but they also got married in real life. They kind of had a pretty nasty divorce. The actor had already left the show. The one, the male actor had already left the show for a while, but he came back and he actually got involved. The two characters got involved again, which I thought which must be kind of awkward. And maybe it was, but yeah. these are actors being professional and, some you know, actors and can handle it and some can't, I guess. But these, but you know, but it's just, it's a lack of perfect. There's people that I don't like that I have to work with all the time. And, you know, but it's just professionalism. I, I don't like you, but I have to talk to you. And I'm going to be polite to you. And I'm going to be nice to you. You know, I mean, the same thing happened with, with Jerry Ryan and Kate Mulgrew in Star Trek Voyager. I did a conference call like way back when, when Kate Mulgrew was, or it was either Jerry Ryan or Kate Mulgrew. They were both like, we're going to be on warehouse 13 in the upcoming season. And we were, you know, we would always do conference calls with the talent. So like, you know, I think we were doing it with Kate Mulgrew. Just back when you were doing airlock alpha or. And I, yeah, yeah. And, and I got on there and, and I'm talking to her, you know, and I'm just saying, hey, you know, it's just pretty interesting that, you know, that they bring back all these Star Trek people, like, because, you know, that Jack Kenny loves having these Star Trek people on. And so I asked her, it's like, so, you know, I know that Jerry Ryan is also scheduled to come back to season. We don't know what the episodes are going to be, but is there a chance that maybe they might do a reunion between, the, you know, with the two of you? And oh my God, my phone started lighting up with all the texts, like from all these other reporters that were I was friends with that were also on the conference call. And they're like, oh, my God, are you an idiot? They're all, they're all like yelling at me in text because, <laughs> you know, and then Kate Mulgrew was like kind of stumbling over an answer, you know, I think trying to be polite, but obviously kind of miffed about it. And it's because they're like, yeah, they hate each other. They absolutely hate each other. But you know what? They still work together on Voyager right up to the very end. And you had no idea that that was happening. I think in some cases, though, Michael, that it depends on the scope of the show. And also HBO at this point was uh, – I think that because of how big and the scope and the money involved, they kind of had no choice but to um, bend over because they couldn't just replace, unlike soap operas where you can replace an actress. I mean, let's face it, they do it all the time. Days of Our Lives, everybody. Everybody can be replaced. Games of Thrones has replaced actors, though. Yeah, but I mean, like, how many mountains have we had? How many, you know, just, we had, what about the, the guy that, you know, that was in love with Danny? I mean, he was replaced. You know, yeah, but those are minor too. characters. We're talking Cersei. Uh, Come on, that's a huge. Well, I just think that, that there should be, and, and I'm and I'm sorry, but I unless there's some it. kind of really bad thing, I think that there just has to be a level of professionalism. Act in a fucking scene. That's all you have to do, and then leave. You don't have to sit there and marry him I, again I agree or anything. With you. I just think that they, they do your job. I agree with you completely. All I'm saying is that when they talked about it in a couple of interviews, uh, I think it was he, I think it was Lena Headey. She kind of implied there was a little abuse that happened in the relationship. So it wasn't just a case of where they had a bad breakup. I, I, I'm not like trying to get anybody in trouble to say, I'm st not trying to start a rumor or whatever. I'm going by the actresses and the actors. Some of the things they implied was it was a little bit deeper than just 
we had a bad breakup and we didn't get along anymore. It was something deeper that happened behind the scenes that re- it made it made the them put their foot down and say, no. So what do you to, think, Raul? Yeah, what do you think? I um, you know, I I agree with the professionalism. They are actors. This is their job. Yes. You know, don't if if you can't handle the, somebody's personality, maybe you shouldn't get to know them. Maybe you shouldn't date where you work. I I, I yeah. My complaint with the Orville. Why are half the cast dating the other cast? That is the, the episode, that is the epicenter. That is a good example. That is a good example because, you know, if, you know it happens because they spend so many hours. Working. Sure, sure. It, it's, it's, it, but, but, but that's when you say, I, I can't do this because it'll hurt my professional career. And that what, what are we doing here? Are we, is this a dating site or is this my job? And, and the, oh, the answer is always going to be your job. Yeah, and don't shit. And the whole thing is always don't shit where you work, you exactly. know? I mean, I think they can handle it when it works, but when it doesn't work, then they go, well. I mean, I'll tell you what. I, I had, like, you know, not my current boyfriend, but like I, a past boyfriend in the past who would be jealous about every single male that I worked with. It'd be like, oh, I'm so afraid that, you know, that you're going to be dating this person. Like, why? The, I would never even think of that. I would never even imagine that because, you know, my mind would never go in that direction because I don't, sh- I don't like nepotism. I don't like anything that would show favoritism in any way. You know, I, I, I you know, I, 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 I adore my staff as a whole, but not like, you know, where like to the individual part, like, oh, well, we're going to go out and, and be best buddies on the side. Like, I don't even do that, you know, because I think that there, there has to be that level of professionalism where you need to care about people, you know, and you know, you know you, everybody knows about each other's stuff but nobody's like you know that deep into their business to the point where you know because what happens then is if you have people dating is that when, when you do get something like this happening then there's this big fuck up and then nobody can work together according to wikipedia by the way and i know I'm, i shouldn't use wikipedia as a source but i'm trying to do this on the fly okay. um, it says that they, they they dated five years ago so and they broke up five years ago and that they've they've kept oh, them apart we were talking? That's cool. on the set yeah that they, they kept them apart on the set you. so five years and they still can't get fucking over it i've had bad breakups you know where i would say i would never talk to the person again i've gotten to the point you know where i would say at least hello or at least be polite <laughs> yeah. i mean let alone work professionally like if i had kids to. together it's in a way you do the show right you so you're yeah be polite be able to have a conversation uh, i mean it was one scene shit, take this bow kill my brothers done I mean, how fucking long would that take? That'd be that's a morning. It should have actually made it even better. Like, okay, Lena, let's let's use your anger. You're gonna kill Braun. You're gonna set him up to die. Let's just you know, if I was the writers, I would be like, yeah, let's do that. Um, maybe that would have been like a a, a carthatic moment. Um, and but uh, no, but that's cool. Um, so let's move on a little bit. So then we get into Danny not listening to anybody because um, after. Sansa tells everybody their secrets and, and uh, various, the bald guys, you put them, um, bald guy, everybody are like trying to decide, what do we do? I love the political intrigue, by the way, in that whole scene with Tyrion and, and various, where they're trying to actually, th- they realize the two of them have the power to decide the fate yeah, of the that. seven kingdoms in, in their little conversation. Did you, did you see, did you see Tyrion beg Varys? Because he knew Var- Varys is he dead. Knew- He's that's dead. the the power has shifted. Next episode. That's how you know. Exactly. And here he comes, people, ladies and gentlemen, the dog. Ladies and gentlemen, we're the straight from Las Center. Vegas. It's Lord of Har- House Harumph. <laughs> Carlos of House Harumph. <laughs> well, 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 well. We just were talking about how Tyrion and Varys were having their conversation where they are deciding the fate. Of Janice, they have the power. They know it. And Tyrion's begging Varys, "Don't put me in this position because you're going to lose." And Tyrion and Varys is just like, "You know where my loyalties really lie," which set up right. <clears throat> what Sundry said last season, which bald guy, as as Michael calls him, bald guy, you're toast. <laughs> you're toast next episode. But, but Carlos, but before we get into all of that, you know, I, I, and, 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 and because you're a professional who's who's worked in filming, and, and maybe I'm wrong about this. Yeah, maybe never... maybe I'm being a dickwad about this. No. But you know, but we were talking about the fact that that Lena Headey and um, you know, and the guy who I plays Braun. Yeah. Um, you know that that these two were dating offset because apparently they like to shit where they work, and uh, <laughs> so they're dating offset and. 
five years ago had a really bad breakup to the point where they will not appear together on camera. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's totally unprofessional. What do you think about that? That you you suck it up, you, you act in the scene, and then you'll walk away because that's your fucking job. Well, you know, I'm a producer, so naturally I think of actors as um, employees who should be do not disposable. They're, you know, they're employees who should do their job, and I respect the ones that uh, that do it well. Um, you know, but this, you know, the, so yeah, I think it's unprofessional. Definitely. Yeah, um, and that's my thought because, like, I've seen actors work. Like, we were talking about Kate Mulgrew and Jerry Ryan hated each other on the Voyager set. Absolutely, but you know what? They fucking worked together, and you didn't know it. You didn't know yeah, there was any problem between them. Acting. Yeah, that's your job. So that's why I don't like that. I, I think that you know, I, it, it's not like it just happened six months ago. It happened five years yeah, ago. Yeah, Carlos. The reason I brought it up is because that scene uh, in episode, I think it was one, where uh, Qui Gon, Qui Gon. Clyburn hands the crossbow. Oh, Clyburn. 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 I know. I keep thinking it. Anyway, he hands the crossbow and says, "My queen wants you to kill the two brothers." Uh, the reason I thought it was weird is because it turns out I forgot. You, that, that you she, remember, George? We actually talked about this. We I did. Think. Lena Headey refused. So yeah, that's why. No, I, I think yeah. You know, the, the reality is though, from a story perspective, there's not a lot of call for Braun and Cersei to be. In the same scene. Yeah, but because that scene would have worked better with Cersei I think, rather than yeah. Bronn. Um, you know what? I, I'm not sure about that. You kill my whole... brothers. You're going to kill my brothers. This is how serious I want these guys dead. Well, I want you to kill and that, them. And, and one of them, you know, I used to fuck. I, 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 I realize that, that that does make sense. But at the same time, she's, she's killing the brothers, you know, and one that that she loves the other one not so much but <laughs> <laughs> but um so uh, psychologically i can see why she feels like she needs some distance from that yeah like have a surrogate to do it yeah i mean that makes um, sense but i think dramatically it would be better to have her do it but well i mean it would be a better scene to watch but you could make the argument that it, it's beneath cersei the character uh, to to actually deal with Braun as a as an assassin. True, that's, that's true. true. I mean, he's, he's, he's make the so many yeah. social steps down from her, yeah. even as a you know lord. You know, I agree with you. I just a, 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 she likes her minions undead. What do you want? I think <laughs> I, I think we're, what would work better is if we had seen a sorta say to Quiburn. Okay, uh, why are we talking about this? I, I don't know. We had so oh, much fucking on. stuff happen in this oh, episode. We talking about. Oh, we're already past all that, <laughs> Carlos. You should have been here earlier. <laughs> well, I know. I just uh... <laughs> Carlos, I'll get your. I'll just quickly Carlos's point of view. Not quickly. You can, but uh, I'll just ask some quick Gendry, questions then, and you guys can Gendry, tell me. Gendry getting uh, Danny trying to be popular and getting given Gendry. What do you? You know the unexpected. I'm trying to be cool, Gendry. You're the Lord of Storm's Ed. And, uh, and, and I wish Gendry would give me his storms. Then. I know, right? <laughs> oh my! Obsidian battle axe, and he's uh, real, and that and the no, he's a smithy, so he has a strong right hand, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put you this way, Carlos. In the beginning half of the show, when it when it comes to the party, the hound, and Sansa talk, or Gendry, would you pick up a, a thing that sticks out in your mind and makes you go, "Oh, let me talk about that." Well, you know. That whole op of opening sequence, all of those scenes at the beginning, uh, and I'm going to talk about them as a as a piece because okay. um, because to me the feeling I got in watching that is that this is the un uneasiest victory I've ever seen. Just uneasy. There's so much tension in in Winterfell everywhere. Everybody, join me. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you can tell it's late. You can tell it's late. I'm getting punchy. This video thing is probably not a good idea. <laughs> that that right there is Trump's worst nightmare. A Latino who doesn't is not afraid to gesture. Oh, yeah, we, Brooklyn. Know. Anyways, um, so to me, that set up all kinds of tensions going forward, and and this has always been an issue ultimately for Daenerys, where she makes these decisions that could be considered, you know, rash. Um, but you know what? They almost always work out in her favor. So 
you know, maybe it is destiny. I don't know. But certainly she lost another dragon. Um, Wait, what? Wait, I just dragon, seen tonight's I... episode. <laughs> Shut up. Why are we spoiling this? <laughs> um, and But the thing is, shouldn't they have expect, not necessarily expected the, that Euron Greyjoy would ambush them, but shouldn't they have expected that they're going to have those uh, those huge crossbow Scorpions. things? Scorpions. Scorpions, yeah. Right. Um, because I, I expected them. Uh, I mean, well, you know, but, 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 but I didn't even know the ships were over there, which weren't around that corner. But you know, well, because here's because the whole idea too, and, and you're right, Carlos. Because this is poor military planning, where they become so focused on the one thing that they're doing is that they forget that while they're doing all this shit, everybody else that's waiting for them is getting ready for them. You know, that's and they're the not. That, there's that's no no intelligence if she would have waited like everybody wanted to wait where sansa said hey let's let everybody rest in the meantime you could have sent scouts down you could have probably saw that they had these big yeah. harpoon well, how things. do you scout though without the dragons and unfortunately that was the you no you have spies you've got varus for christ's sake yeah, Baldi, so not Baldi. yeah so yeah i mean i i think i think um it was a, a strategic bad move. Um, Which and, is a lot of in Game of Thrones. Right. But, you know, the thing is, those, well, really those scorpions are, are massive. It takes time to move them. Yeah. And as soon as... Uh, which one went down? Ray? Uh, Rhaegal. 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 Um, Rhaegal. As Rhaegal. soon as he... Rhaegal, right. As soon as Rhaegal went down, she should have, first of all, just gone straight up. It was a he. I don't know why everybody kept saying just she. I'm she as in Danny. Oh, her, yeah. Uh, and then, because that dragon is way more maneuverable than those scorpions. Yeah, they all had holes in his wings. His... Well, yeah, but because he was. But that's not the one she's driving. That's whatever. not the yeah. one she's yeah, riding. I'm talking about the one she's riding. Right, Drogon. Yeah. Um, and and she should have basically gone up, and like in a big parabolic arc, and back down. To their to the back because all of the scorpions are pointed forward. Yeah. And and yeah, attack it, them. Kind of weird. Well, we think the well, well, we think they are right. We yeah. don't know there's any on the back. Yeah. Well, okay, that's. I mean, but but she could have come question, straight but, down though. But you're right. She could have straight straight up come. You know, did a loop and they come straight down on you're them. Right. They had an elevation limit because yeah. they can't go straight up. But you know, but at the same time, all of a sudden you just lost one of your children. They just fell into the water and they're dead. Stress, you know, she, you know. And I mean, and she's never faced uh, this before. You know, so, so we're thinking about this did. now. But she's already lost it. With, had already yeah, lost but I mean, dragon. yeah, exactly but that was the same way. So Michael's that right. was a different thing, though. Uh, in Aegon, in the in the history of, of Aegon, oh here, how he conquered. Now, only the only reason I'm bringing this up is because that was a reason why he won the the Seven Kingdoms. There was one of, one of those castles which was never been defeated. The reason they lost was Aegon took the dragon. And he went straight up in the air and straight down, and he actually, and then he destroyed the, uh, he burnt them alive inside the castle. I don't remember mm -hmm. which castle it was. I was watching the history of it, um, and that some that someone had posted. And the funny thing is, is that that was why Aegon won with the dragon. He mm -hmm. went straight up and straight. Maybe that's down. maybe they're saving that for the finale, though. Maybe that's how she maybe, ultimately defeats. Maybe Cersei, if you look you at know? the elevation of. Um, of what of what the these right stuff. because all of those things they, limit. they open up a hole of vulnerability right and then they can't go there like perpendicular yeah. Like, yeah 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 and so whatever that angle at maximum angle is that they have like all of those scorpions that yeah. that describes a perimeter around which they are yeah i mean and once you do that and once you do that you're going to need scorpion viagra in order to make you know to defeat them because you got to get it up or a scorpion bowl you're going to get really drunk and you okay so my next question for you guys um sansa what do you think of of how she's handling this i mean she's not well we, we not talk, in open talk rebellion about, so you know what the episode name is because we're all stumped oh you know what i let me check uh, it's called impression. the last of the Starks. Is what I found. I, I, I um, it could be. I, I, I call it um the uh, worst kept secrets. I don't know. Um, it's like a bunch uh, of people gossiping in a bathroom in a women's room. I don't know. And I'm checking like, to see if they put it up on HBO. Don't go. tell anybody. 
I mean, I mean, Wikipedia. Even they're not source; they're sourcing it to HBO, but I couldn't I link it. I feel like you might be right. But they're saying, well, but they're saying, Last of the Starks is what they're saying in Wikipedia. But I don't have HBO. I don't have HBO the same way everybody else does. I have it through my Xfinity. So well, I have it through uh, a thirty-day trial on uh, Amazon through Amazon Prime. But still, I mean, it should give me the title, right? It's weird. Well, no, they, I mean they they've been saving the title for yeah, for all of them. Would, why would you? Okay. Because they oh. don't want to give anything away. They're trying to ramp up the... No, I found it. It's, it's Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> well, now. Oh, now, you know, now well, that's perfect. HBO is being... Uh, you know what's funny is the two creators are doing a Star Wars show. Luke, I am your sexy right. aunt. Sleep with me. Lucas actually <laughs> helped, helped film uh, episode one of the season. So. Yes, he did. It's the truth. Um, so that's possible. It could be Rise of the uh, Stark Walkers. Starworkers? No, it's the last of the Starks. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I uh, bet you, I'm 95 percent sure. Not, they still I'm kind of leaning on believing you, but they're I, still I, calling I, it Game of Thrones 71. Awesome. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's it's Game of Thrones. It's episode four. That's what. I knew yeah. Before. So uh, uh, I'm sure when we when we find out the name, it probably has something important. to do with what we're going to see in the next episode. Uh, I think it's actually going to have the words last of the and Starks. Well, Emilia, <laughs> all we know is that Emilia Clark said on Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> oh no, episode five is bigger. Get the biggest TV you can get. It's bigger than episode three. She went like this way. Well, I mean, last of the Starks to me makes sense. Means Well, I mean, because it's it's these four main characters that and they say it, but they say that line though too, yeah. Carlos. They yeah, said okay, it in the yeah, God's no, word. I heard it. Yeah, 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 exactly, and that's what I mean. Is from that point by the weirwood tree, right? Where they're that's all together. Sense. What over by the weirwood tree when they had the little start? Yeah, meeting? yeah, the little yeah. meeting, little right. family meeting, family yeah. meeting. The um, confab, and from all there, meetings happen at the weirwood. Just they go their separate ways. You don't see them again together. I don't think. That's right. That's right. Oh. I think that's the end. It's it's that last week, just like the party, just mm-hmm. like that party where I know people are going to be bitching about, you know, how well lit it was, and also like how long it was. But you know, but that's the whole thing is that this is the last time. This is like the the, the night before graduation where yeah. the class is together the one last time, and that's it. This is the Probably this is the end game. Complaints about how long it is. Uh, yeah, I don't have any complaints about how long it is. Um, by the way, um, you know, I, I felt like. That- the, yeah. Other okay. than Tyrion complimenting Bran on the on the creativity of his wheelchair, which is sort of re- a real world reference, um, who the fuck's been pushing him around the snow? He like, has someone because he gestured to him and yeah. Oh, did he? Yep. Yeah. yeah. He's, got a, he's got a guy for that. Of course. Somebody's out there in the background. Going, just yeah. Yeah. You know, but what's cool he, about he, that? He, he turns to his shoulder and says, you know, makes a gesture. And- but you all pick up, like, I don't know if they ever explained in another episode, but you picked up at least in their conversation that that wheelchair came from his visits in the past yes. by seeing this right. wheelchair yeah, in the past. Right. In the past is what I like it because uh, as we know in real life history, like sometimes in the past, there's greater technology like ancient Egypt than like where they had the uh, aqueducts and then and Rome did. the hot oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, remember Valeria was... Atlantis, basically, yeah, yeah. advanced yeah. in many ways. Yes, that you know, and and yep. the fall, Good you know, the doom, um, the doom, they called it. Yeah, he sent okay. all the whole world backwards. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. you know, quite. No, a, that's quite true. Uh, so I just always wonder who was the asset actually, actually would push him around though, because you know, he, look, I, you know, whoever he is, he's, is no he's the Lord of Winterfell. He he's has, the unsung hero of this entire series. That he, whoever that dude no, is, he's no Hodor. That's all because if Bran's doing it, that's cool. But I want to see the burn marks. Bran's not doing it. He doesn't even care. Maybe he's doing magic. He's like. Um, So, but here's the big burning question, and maybe you guys have already addressed this, but maybe um, where Sansa says they have topical ingredients for burning questions. Yeah, well, and you're going to need one after this. Um, Why? When Sansa says, um, "There's another Yoda." No, I'm just kidding. You know uh, who? I'm saying what? Well, yeah, she's talking about Jon Snow. What part are you talking about? She when she's up on the wall, like when she's up, or not on the wall, but when she's up Part on the thing, Tyrion. when she's saying like, yeah, when she says to Tyrion, there's another because that she's about to tell Tyrion oh, the oh, secret, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, which is what Tyrion then shares with Baldy. Well, he doesn't really share it, but he that's just she, he, he's sitting with Baldy later, says, oh hey, isn't it? Doesn't it suck that all of this shit that we've been through oh, all right, these years okay. yeah, yeah. is because of a man falling in love with a woman who didn't love him back, and then yeah, Baldy's no, like, oh. 
shit, how long have you known? Okay, you right, know? okay. That was her telling him the secret. That right, have. because, yeah, you're right, because Tyrion later does. That's why I said, can you keep a secret would be the best title. Um, yeah, I mean, and Varys was right. I mean, she broke her promise immediately, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, That's why I, th- I felt like everything they built up of how everybody knows that John, and John always says, you know, talk about my father if you want and how honor and how it got him killed. Well, that's why the the sisters were like look at each other and they're kind of patting him on the head and going, yeah, we know John. I mean, not John. Yeah, John. And they're like, or Aegon or whatever you want to call him. And they're like, that's nice because seriously, that is how it came out. They they realized that he's pussy whipped. Oh, let's face it. The words were almost said. Pussy whipped. John, they know that John is pussy whipped. So basically, I, I mean, I'm sorry. Some to hear- people just call that uh, love, George. No. <laughs> Pussy whipped because it's not just love; it's blind obedience. Love. Uh, I, but you gotta admit, love is blind, when, George. But you have to admit, when when it came down to like him and Dan- Danny trying to like reinforce that nookie, and he was like, "I can't do it, Danny. I can't do it because you're my aunt." Oh, uh, uh, you know what I mean? That's basically. John. But but you know but the thing that we're talking about Carlos too is that you know I know that I know that uh, George wants to say this is just women gossiping but really That's I mean to me I I saw this as Sansa doing a little finger move which is basically acknowledging that that knowledge is power that information yes. is power yeah. that when you possess it, and that's why like when you get into the throne and into the into the uh, into the uh, Targaryen throne room, you know, when you have, when you have Tyrion and Baldi, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they're sitting there Baldi. because they possess this information. They're making decisions about the fate of who's going to lead this kingdom yeah. My behind God. the scenes because they have that power because they have that knowledge and they know I, that that is exists. But, but, but I'd but, like to, I'd like to talk about two things. One, the, the, what drives the two advisors is completely different. And B, that they both acknowledge that they have come to an impasse and yeah. that they, they will oppose each other from now on. But the fact that they can even do that is because they have power to do it with yes. the knowledge that they possess. Remember, because knowledge is the biggest currency in this show. And remember something that Sansa said to the Hound. She said if it wasn't for the Ramsey Boltons, right. all the shit that happened. I would still be the little become, So what she was basically saying is that, like what she said to Peter Baelish is, Thank you for all the lessons you taught me. Even though she went through hell, she took on board what he taught her to, you know, and that's basically why she's not listening to John is what I'm gathering that. Yes, John, I love you. You're my brother, but you're naive. I've learned the true lessons of life through my hardships and that she kind of told the hound that. And that's what she was doing. She like told John, yes, I promise I won't say anything, but she was using her Peter Baelish, Ramsey Bolton, Life learned lessons the hard way, and taking mm. that and, and on board is what I gathered from that. And and I think her telling the hound that was uh, her way of telling the audience. That's why I didn't honor my uh, promise to my brother when I told Tyrion, because mm. it's all about the big picture. It's not about keeping little promises. It's about doing what you got to do to get shit done for your family. And for your, for the everybody. The truth is, when when you're talking about power and the distribution of power. Honor is a play word. It's for children. You can't do that. That is not that is not your that is not your goal. It is not your focus. And by the way, it gets you killed and everybody around you hurt. Thank you for the lesson. That's true. That's true. Uh, yep. And by the way, I do have a spoiler for next uh, next uh, week's episode because oh you know God. I used to deal in spoilers. Um, Bran actually reveals the source of his knowledge, um, and apparently, it's he has an HBO Go subscription. My God, <laughs> I, I thought it's because he slept at La Quinta last night. <laughs> Spanish for free internet. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Let's jump ahead a little bit. So we is that right, Carlos? You're, you're the Spanish speaking one, right? No, uh, I'm, my oh, name yeah, perfect Raul. translation. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> He's not the only Spanish guy. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're all usually that. Was an honorary Spanish? No, it wasn't. Never mind. Um, so um, let's talk about. Uh, let's jump ahead a little bit so we don't like take too long so Michael falls asleep. Um, so. Let's talk about how Danny lost the dragon, and it, we're getting towards the end game there. Well, that was a bloody loss too. Oh. You saw that thing go right through the neck, and it was. And you saw it is a, a small possibility that Rhaegal survived, but no, like, I don't think so. I mean, it got its neck. You know, uh, not only did Rhaegal die, 
But then when whoever the survivors were that washed ashore, and then she lost um, Miss Andre, and then you could see the Mad Queen forming in this episode. You know that's where it's going. Like I, I'm, I feel well, the I angry, know. well, more like the angry yeah, queen. I think it's the angry queen. Um, yeah, it'll be mad in a different way. She's gonna die. I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the idea that she's going to go insane, like her father did, is just uh, yeah. But she's definitely yeah, weighing the, the the lives of of those people in in queen in, in oh sure in the landing are not exactly on on like her greatest concern anymore she's she's saying how can i get back at that bitch that killed my my my, she's my, gonna my die family. that's my prediction but anyway so so that happens and she you know the mountain kills uh misandry it was a little weird to me because like the small group that was on that sand and all the people in front of the gates and it's like it just felt like they could have just attacked and fit it like to just play Attacked with what with like 20 people. arrows no 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 arrows. i mean the, the group that we saw on the island with danny it just felt like i don't know why they it just felt like it, it seems strange to are me are you talking about at dragonstone yeah because they, no. they were they were they beat the dragonstone no not at dragonstone yeah. i'm talking when 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 he beheaded um misandry that's not like, that's not an island not that's island Keith it's a beachhead Mud, mud's head, whatever the hell it was. The, the area where they looked up and... Yeah, yeah. Okay, there. so what's your... Point? So my point is, is that the amount of forces behind Danny, it felt weird that, like, that well, was... this is a negotiation. There. They're not yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't, like, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, all those troops are there. Even the dragon was there. But the whole idea is that you're there to negotiate. If you can't go in a negotiation clean, then you'll never be able to negotiate. So right. even if you have an army okay. there, you can't sit there and do a sneak attack like that. that then nobody would ever negotiate with you. Ever. So we know, trust Jamie, you. yeah, we know Jamie's on his way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and he broke Brianne's heart. Uh, by the way, Carlos, you weren't here when we talked about that. After he broke her hymen. <laughs> He definitely did that. Well, you we know, know Mr. Hymans. She might have fallen off a horse. I know, she, know. Rode, she rode a horse a lot, so it could have yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I know that's not really a thing about virginity. I know that's an old superstition, but still, I just yeah, I can help it. Sorry. She definitely rode a horse in this episode. Sometimes it can happen when she falls off from what I've heard. Um, Carlos, what did you she think of uh, Brianne and Jamie this episode? Because we didn't talk to you about oh, this. It was tragic. I mean, we kind of, we kind of knew this was bound to happen. There'd been, I mean, that tension had been there from the beginning, from that yeah. first hot tub that they had together. Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think their story is a story of just a tragic, bad timing. Could have uh, been, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, loyalties that are, are conflicting. Yeah. Um, or misplaced. They're, and they're both, they're both, victims of that if you will um and you know in in their own way i mean what to me what was significant wasn't that he broke her heart what was significant was that the way he did it when he said cersei's hateful and so am i yeah. yeah and then he started admitting things like pushing brand out the window and all that shit. yeah well, he said that first and then said, going, yeah guys I, I, I agree with what he's doing, but my, my, my disagreement is why he does it. It's the same reason why a father, when, when he has to leave his family, says, I never liked you guys. I never wanted to be with you guys. So they don't while he's breaking his heart. Yeah. He's trying to convince the other person. Yeah, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. Yep. Raul. I, think, I think that's exactly what's, what's happening. Um, yeah, I like that. It makes sense. Um, yeah. so, so then this all happens, and then people are flipping out on the internet about how Masendry, uh, the mountain drops off her head, mm -hmm. uh, tastefully done in a way, sort of from a distance. But of course we see Grey Worm's reaction and yeah. Danny, her face, she's lost Jorah, yep. she's lost Rhaegal, mm -hmm. she's lost Masendry. She's gonna, she's gonna go You great. know what's really interesting is all the people on the internet who are bitching about, not enough main characters died during the Battle of Winterfell. Well, once it happens, right, can't win. They're, they're dying now. And there more are going to go. So That's how they uh, died, you know, we could have dealt with it if the Rhaegal had died. I, this is what I read: if Rhaegal had died in the big battle last episode, it would have made more sense. But just no, to have it, it doesn't. random crossbow. No, no, this is no. Yeah, they don't perfect. understand that dramatically. You have to raise the stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Losing a second dragon. 
Rage. And also, and, and also balancing things out because, like you know, they were you know they're saying like all these troops are moving in is going to balance things out, but now they've really balanced it out because mm-hmm. now you're down to one dragon, and we got all these fucking guns that we're about to shoot at your ass. So. And that one dragon is going to fuck shit up. They don't Cersei and and Euron are in for a rude awakening when it comes to like what that one. Well, they still have to get past those scorpions. You saw the entire yeah, the battlements they are. I think they're the battlements, the ships, all yeah. of them have scorpions. I have a feeling. That's not going to be an issue. I really feel like uh, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. I really do. Well, I mean, I hope that they, I hope they're smart enough to figure out, like, the first thing they should have done, and they should have done this even before they went on, on their attack, was to have some strategy to deal, to counter the, the scorpions. Well, here's yeah. the problem. Here's the problem they yeah. face. Danny, based on what I've gathered from watching uh, the concerns everybody raises, to, but you're a good person. We're not going to kill the innocents. The problem is that Danny, and they've said this since last season, Danny could have killed everybody, but it would have cost innocent lives. She was holding back when she had three dragons. Yeah. Even with one, I believe that what's going to end up happening that's going to raise the stakes and make people betray one another is Danny can still win but she has to go all crazy and she has to like say fuck the civilians and that's when shit's and that's when people like Varys and and Tyrion are going to be like well again i don't call that crazy i i that's i call that misguided misguided i don't mm-hmm. think she's i don't think she's insane i don't think she's insane Maybe. either but i think that when she when she, when her when she can't trust her own counsel which she shouldn't at this point she shouldn't at this we point. know behind the scenes but she doesn't know that but at this point she might all of her counsel has led to well first of all Tyrion is staying loyal to her. Number yes. one, she's Varys, not going to stand that way. Well, yes. we'll, well, yes, you know he he was willing to literally put himself on the line for her because you're right. Varys, you know, though, Varys, Varys is definitely all she had to do was that. And I think Tyrion's going to actually dead. turn Varys in because he's not going to want to see his plan. I don't think it's going to be a turn in situation. I don't think it's a turn. I think Varys and 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 Tyrion are going to be in their own private battle. No, we know that Varys is going to die because Melisandre predicted this, and everything she said as far as that, like I'm going to come back one last time and die, and you are too. And he's well, he says, "Do you?" Well, the, what he said is, "When you return to King's Landing, you'll have your moment." Say, she said oh Westeros, but good enough, you know. She didn't say. Yeah, I don't. I didn't remember exactly what the what that. I do. I watched it recently, rewatch, and she and she said, "I got to return to Westeros one more time." So do you? But she didn't say King's Landing. Uh, but yeah, she Varys is dead. I think. Either an end of next episode or the beginning of the next, but there will be an execution. Um, anyways, well, people are going to die for sure. You know, and you're going to see happen. some. You're going to see some main characters die uh, because it is Game of Thrones, and all the whiners that you yeah. know that it didn't happen at the Battle of Winterfell. I'm will, actually will, will get their hunger sated right. by the you know by the blood that will be flowing over. Here's what the, throws me off about my predictions weeks. and based on things like that is John being on the ground, and you see the commercial for next week. Mm-hmm. John being in the ground catching up to King's Landing part. I honestly don't. I think John will survive this whole story. I don't think he'll take the throne. No, he will. He won't take the throne, but I don't think he's going to die. Danny is toast. And I think John is going to kill her. I honestly do. Um, well, let's go back a little bit, George, and okay. tell me what you were, uh, where you were starting to go with uh, uh, before you went off on, on the tangent about about Danny going. Um, well, oh, John, John is on the ground. John's you said John's on the ground. On the ground. I never. Ex- okay, I found it a little convenient. Although it does, it does kind of make sense. Rhaegal was hurt, so if you if John was riding Rhaegal, it would have you know because Rhaegal was still wounded from the previous uh, battle. Right. So that did right. make sense. A little convenient, but it did make sense. Um, and even if Rhaegal had fallen into the sea, John could have survived. But, but maybe. But the point is, is that uh, John's role, as far as the remainder of this, I believe he will kill Danny because he will see no choice. He doesn't want the throne, but Danny just can't let it go. She's like totally obsessed with. Well, she, so it takes that's not an obsession. Takes that is life not of an obsession because it takes on a life of its own. Varys believes the exact same thing, and he is a rational actor in this. So you can't just chalk it up. I, I think you're a little obsessed with Danny being insane, and she's not. No, no, no. I, I agree with you on that um, part. You know, she talk. she is correct. Varys is correct that when word gets out, it will split. And she was right too in saying that it will take on a life of its own. That's yeah. why she wanted John to promise, don't tell anybody. Yeah, and, and she was right about that. Up. 
The fact that he doesn't want to be king Mr. only, guy only makes some people want him to be king more. Exactly, so, and, and know, he couldn't let it go. Him. He had to be Mr. Honest Guy to the very end. And he should to, only trust people that don't want the power to take the power. If because, John had right. not told anyone. That's what Vera said to him. Yeah. yeah, and if John had not told his, even he thought he could trust his sisters, don't tell anybody, well, this is what's going on, people. And unfortunately, that's going to be what fucks up. Well, he and, was she begged, and Danny begged him not to do that, too. He was right. Uh, so again, you know, the, the, the uneasiness amongst the, the people who love each other or are allied to each other in this episode is just palpable. Um, and everyone, and the tragedy of course, is everyone is doing it for the, the right reasons as, as Except they see. Arya. I, I have to have a discussion that's, about that's Arya. Not, oh no, I don't think that's true. No, Arya said something yeah. during that Weirwood meeting where she said, John said, so if you never trust people you didn't grow up with how are you ever going to get allies and she said i don't need allies and that one little exchange no, no she said i already I, I i only need a few allies but it was unwise advice her it was from her point of view no she's that, talking about herself she's talking about herself she's but talking she, about herself she's giving advice to a brother who's the leader of these of this entire well thing. no i mean i think she's uh, she's talking about about her own her she own was position using her perspective but it was it was the grander scheme. I don't think it was advice. I don't. Think uh, I I didn't take it that way. All right. Well, I do, I, don't I, I, I saw it as I saw it as a prelude to her departure. Yeah. Um, oh, she's going to end up going off with the hound at the end. I think on more adventures that we don't see off screen. Well, um, maybe if they end end, but they're headed for King's Landing. Oh, for now, yeah. And you know, so the question is, the mountain. What is Arya going to do? Well, you know what I think she's, she's going to do. There. Well, yeah, now everyone assumes that she's going to kill Cersei because she killed the Night King. Uh, green um, Eyes, Carlos, we found this out yeah, after yeah, last yeah, episode. I know. No, we, yeah, we. we it's on the list. We, last thing on her list. Brown Eyes was um, uh, Walter Frey. Uh, Blue Eyes was yeah, the Frey. Green Eyes is Cersei. Maybe. Well, she has green eyes, so it's kind of weird if it isn't. So does Jamie Lannister. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, shit. And he is going down there, isn't he? Yeah. You know what, though? You have to kill the guy to wear your face. You can't just wear their face. Uh, that was something I double-checked on. And I was like, shit, she can't wear his face unless Jamie's dead. Oh, you? right. It, exactly. And that, That's a problem. That argues, that argues for her killing Jamie. So that makes me wonder, so Jamie's going to try to, like, is how Jamie had kind of admits to Bran, can't help myself. So I'm thinking Arya's going to kill him and take his place. Unfortunately, that's how it works. You can't just take someone's face unless you kill them in that, in that world. Right, here. right. Mm -hmm. So now I have to adjust my uh, original prediction to, <laughs> yes, that still happens, but she has to be the one to kill Jane, unfortunately. It's I thought bad. you were playing Plinko from, uh, from yeah. the thing. Uh, with, with All the right, let's wrap this up, because uh, I think we've covered everything pretty much. Uh, Michael, out of a rating of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, of course, what would you rate this episode? Um... Wait, what are the numbers between one and ten? Um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Um, point five, you can do point whatever. And you can do point fives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, five. man. You can even do um, they really have twenty numbers. Yeah. Did you? Well, I like set up episodes because I like I, I love the idea that it's getting us ready for something, and I like that we take the time to have a setup episode and do it correctly. I felt that this was a really good character building um, episode. I really liked it. This is kind of like the last hurrah. This is kind of like watching Survivor, and you're now watching the you know the reunion show, but yeah. before, yeah. but now they're gonna go back out there and actually do like a whole like you know Hunger Games now, and you know that we're, you know that that everybody's going, and this is kind of a last hurrah for it. And I really love the, you know, the growth that we had in terms of Sansa, um, you know, and just and reminding us of those, of those changes so and everything regal. else. Yeah, she is. And it just feels regal. She feels yeah. like, like, like you Catelyn. feel like the, like the Stark family is this That's very nice. noble family. And, and you feel that just the way that she interacts with people. They're so like the Ewing's on, on Dallas. And, and, and the fact that they can, um, you know, and the fact that they can, um, you know, that they can, uh, you know, and the fact that they can, um, you know, like that they can, they can, they can uh, have information exchange without having to come out and hold our hand through it. I say it's. I, I'll give it a seven. I like that. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go. I. I'm very conservative about giving uh, when it comes to seven to ten and things like that. But there was these little moments when they're all like they did the same thing they did with episode two, where they had the, they took the time to have the character interactions and then they hit us with the big stuff. 
I'm going to say 7.5. I'm, I'm not far above you, Michael, but I, I'm going to go a little farther because of the little things um, for me. Uh, what about you, Raul? I'm going to go much higher than both of you because I think the, um, the acting was a tour de force, like I mentioned already. Uh, and I, 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 although it isn't, it is a setup episode, like Michael said, I think I also like these type of episodes because they show what is important to the, to the creators and the direct and the creative people behind Game of Thrones. And um, what's important to the G Game of Thrones people is the forming of bonds and the breaking of bonds. And you see it perfectly in this episode. This, this episode is the epicenter of what I said about Game of Thrones. When, when, when he created the series, he wanted to show a realistic setting where people die, people live, but it's important who they love and how they express that love. And those things are deathly important to everybody in this episode. Fair enough. What about you, uh, Carlos? Oh, and my, my, my score is 8.5. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, emotionally, I'm with Raul. Uh, I feel like it's worth an 8.5, but rationally, I'm probably down in the 7 to 7.5. That's range where I was emotionally. Because, probably... because, because I have to take off points for certain things. Yeah. Um, I, I have to take points off for just the stupidity of them not preparing for the scorpions. They just should have. They've encountered them before. The dragons have been killed her first dragon was killed with exactly that, uh, that kind of weapon. One of her dragons was almost killed, almost killed, you know, injured with uh, that weapon. They should have known that in the time that, that they were dealing prepare. with, yeah. yeah, to prepare, um, you know, and they should have anticipated that Euron Greyjoy might do something like, like uh, ambush them because that's what he's done before too. So um, everyone was acting the way they should and they should have known that. They should have accounted for that. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I, I have some problems with that. Um, but, uh, but I agree with Raul that, you know, we saw some really solid acting here. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think this is the most grown up we've seen Arya just in terms of, how she speaks and that very touching, you know, breakup scene with Gendry. I um, love the entire, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it just, um, it, you know, and it mirrored what we saw between Brienne and, and, uh, and Jamie because everybody knows their destiny lies elsewhere uh, in a different place than their heart does. And that's where they're going to meet. I mean, destiny really is what you're seeing unfold in this last half of this season. Yep. for all of these characters. Um, and, and the nice thing is, that means Gendry's available again, Carlos. So he's on, he's on the market. He's on the market. Maybe him and Braun, we never know. I've watched that actor since he was in Skins, um, oh my God. which was a great British series. Every time you see that. Maybe him and Podrick, you know, we'll see. Um, all right, Michael, where do you know that Podrick is talented in the set? Well, yeah, well, he's not just talented. He has certain size advantages. Maybe anyway, he, you don't know that. No, they said that. Did they? Yeah, Braun actually brought up many times and grabbed his, and said, well, you're mad. Yeah, but he was, he might be a grower rather than a shower, That's though. I mean. It's very possible. Maybe it was yeah. cold. Yeah. I mean, but you know, by the way, did you guys pick up, and I know we're wrapping up, but did you guys pick up like for the Podrick, because, you know, just thinking right. about Podrick, you know, the way he smiled at, um, yep. you know, at redhead guy, then he smiled at the girl. Like, it might, kind of makes me think that they were like hinting at him being almost bisexual, or at least, you know. I didn't pick up on that as that reason, and it wasn't because, of, it's because I figured, I, I picked up on it as like, they all, he was one of the people that were in that room when they last uh, two episodes ago, yeah, like, and they had that moment together, all of them like getting to know each other. And I felt like that was why it was like, they, they had become friends in a fast way. I don't know. They just talked about boinking each other. And then like, you know, he's kind of given that look and then he gives the same look to the girl behind well, yeah, him. Yeah. Which kind of makes me, I mean, it was just the same look. And to me, like, and, and, and maybe Carlos maybe can, you know, talk well, about better, you know, it. somebody who produces, but in a storytelling mode, that's kind of what you would do to kind of indicate, 
you know, something like that, where you have the same exact reaction, where you it's link possible. those two reactions together. I don't it's know. It's possible. I think it's also possible he was just kind of... Maybe just kind of hoped that, you know, Podrick, you know, kind of hey, liked you know both what? ways. I don't uh, know. Subtext has existed since back before Xena, the Warrior Princess, and Gabrielle. Maybe we we'll just ask J.K. Rowling if he's gay or not, or bi. I mean, she might be able to tell us. <laughs> she won't let us, she won't let us know for another few years. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to wait on that one. <laughs> you are ready for the internet that waits for Podrick slash Dumbledore fiction. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, I, I have the feeling something is in store for Podrick. I, I don't know what, but mm-hmm. they, they keep well, it's not gonna him. Be they keep having these lingering shots on him at the end of scenes and maybe him and, they're, maybe they're maybe building to something with him. Maybe him and Sansa for all we know. Uh, no. 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 Maybe him and John Snow. Maybe him and John Well, maybe. <laughs> no, I think Have John, they even interacted? I've never even seen that. I mean uh, probably John, not. I don't think Anyways. So. I don't think well, I mean, Jamie, if Jamie goes off and gets killed, then he's, you know, Squire can become the Lance. I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> Michael Hinman, where can people find you on social media? Um, don't stalk me on social media. Stalk them, people. Stalk them. That is the wrong attitude, Michael. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Build your brand, man. Build your brand. You can, you can find me at, at C Pedraza on Twitter <laughs> and uh, send me like really nasty notes and, and your boobs. You know what do? Send me your boobs. <laughs> send them dick pics, people. Uh, no, really. Man, I'm, I'm so happy I've got you guys looking out for me. <laughs> Thank you. We're, there. We're looking for certain parts, yes. <laughs> you want to be found on Airwave Alpha? What, what are you doing now? Um, well, I mean, they can find me on Alpha Waves Radio. Um, you know, the, the show is kind of in hiatus, so I don't know. I mean, I, I got my microphone all set back up, so who knows? You know, it's been, well, until they been do, disassembled for a while. All right, until they do, where can they stalk you? Um, well, they, I mean, they could just come to my place and, you know, bring some food though. Yeah. Bring, you know, you know hot Tinder dogs, people, maybe like I was just trying to get like Go a, sure. like just some pizza rolls or something, but sure. New York, everything shuts down like at midnight. I oh, swear yeah. to God. I heard about that. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, let me go to Raul next. Where can people find you on Grinder, Grinder, Tinder, Twitter? All of it. All of it. I don't care. Uh, gr- uh, farmer's, farmer's best friend. I don't farmer's know. Farmer's market. You know. <laughs> Whatever. Raul no, Pedraza uh, on. Good. What? No, wait, hold on. I'm joking. Good. Yes, my little done. Facebook spiel. So um, you can <laughs> find me on Facebook. Uh, my full name is Raul. And I have a picture of Peter Baelish's uh, house symbol, the Mockingbird. Uh, that's my picture, and I live in Arizona. So there you go. All right. And Mr. Carlos, what about you? Uh, I am on Twitter, at C Pedraza, and at Axe Monitor. On Facebook, at uh, Axe Monitor uh, Facebook discussion group. And we also have the uh, official Axe Monitor page on Facebook. And then, of course, our website, axemonitor.com. Cool. You can find us on Facebook at The Real Super Geeks. You can also find us at Subspace Radio when we're syndicated on Mondays at subspace-radio.net. And you can also find us on uh, geeks underscore TR as far as our Twitter. Um, so, and, we, and we'll eventually get some other things going on uh, one day. Uh, geeks so, The Real. Is it? the Yeah. Yeah. That's what it stands no, for. It just sounds like something Yoda would say. Geeks The Real. Geeks The Real. Geeks, the real we are. Um, yeah. So yeah. So uh, this was Game of Thrones reaction for episode four, which I still don't know for sure what that. That's kind oh, yeah, of. Yeah. Let me up. see if that's. Yeah. Uh, one more time before we go, I want to find out if we can actually say what is the damn title of this. I'm going to refresh one last time. And seriously, if you don't know the title by now, again, yeah, uh, yeah. HBO. It is the last of the Starks. It, it is thank the last you. of the Starks. I see you it. all owe me fifty dollars each. You know, you that's why I didn't. I, I never bet against you. With, we know, we, uh, when it comes to inside knowledge, yeah, Michael. Raul and I have a history of like three dollars being the top bet. It's like you know, if you we're not like big poker games. Don't you mean Carlos and you have? No, Raul. Uh, we had a bet, dude, for three dollars, and I sent I, you three dollars. I asked, dude. Yeah, yeah. I know. Lies. Raul and I had a, bet, had a bet too, right, Raul? Wink, wink. Oh, yes. The Remember bet that one time? The other day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Damn. Good save, dude. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, join us the next time when episode five. I, Amelia Clark says episode five is the one to watch. She even went like this, which I believe. So. Well, I mean, she does have a dragon. <laughs> so, she, she has you one. Can expect some of that. She has one left. So. Yeah. I'm kind of sad. Uh, peace out, my dragon, because that one was John's dragon. A good thing he wasn't riding that mother. So yeah, yeah. All right, sad. you guys. When you saw him fall into the into the ocean, it was. Well, uh, 
I wish you good fortune in the wars to come, Michael Hinton. Oh, yeah, you too. Peace out. Peace.